G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Well, Sunday afternoon here in Australia, it'll be sort of Sunday morning in the States and not a lot has happened with uh, Bitcoin over the weekend. Hasn't had a sell-off yet, which is good. Uh, hasn't really pumped too much. It did get up to around about the $11,000 mark and, you know, got a little bit excited, but it's quickly pulled back again. So it's rejected from that $11,000 range fairly regularly uh, of late. But in saying that, it won't really drop below 10,000 either. It's being bought up aggressively uh, at 10,000 and being sold off, you know, somewhat aggressively at 11,000 as well. So I guess the question is, how can we try and find out what might be happening? What is the market going to do? Well, there's a few ways we can do it. Number one is we can look at the market cap. Well, the price is probably the first one. That gives you a bit of an indication. But again, we've been ranging from sort of 10,000 to 11,000 for quite some time now. And we're trying to work out, are we going to break to the upside? Are we going to break to the downside? What's going to happen? Well, let's just have a look at the market cap. What's the total market cap going to tell us? So here is the total market cap. Sorry, let's go up here. And is there anything that's uh, telling us what's happening here? Well, there's the 9th of March, which is uh, pretty much the pandemic hit in. But ever since then, it's been trading upwards. Does it have down days? Absolutely. So we trade it up here and then down. Trade it up there and then we came down. Up down, up, down. As you can see, this is just a pattern. But the overall pattern is we are trading upwards. Yes, we had a pretty steep correction here. Welcome to cryptocurrencies and just markets in general, it happens. But now we're starting to trade upwards. So the market crap is, market crap, <laughs> excuse me, the market cap, it is growing. Sometimes it grows pretty fast. You can see over here, it grows really fast and then we have a bit of a sell-off. Look, the day traders in the market, when they have these big moves up, of course they're going to take profits. But overall, people are buying in. So that's one key indicator we can look at. The market cap is growing. All right, what else can we look at? Let's have a look at the S&P 500. What's happening with the S&P 500? If the S&P 500 is not doing well, generally Bitcoin's not going to do well. Now we can see, same thing. The pandemic happened here and it's just pushed up. And it even pushed up quite high, had a big sell-off, and now it's pushed up, and it's sort of rolled over a little bit, but it's just kind of ranging here. All right, so S&P 500, ranging, market cap's growing. What else can we look at that might give us a bit of an indication? All right, let's have a look at the Dixie. What's the US dollar doing? Now, if the US dollar is going to do well, then Bitcoin generally won't do well. Assets in general won't do that well. If the dollar does really well, people are putting uh, their money in banks and that and trying to earn the interest in that. When the banks and the interests aren't doing well, then the assets are doing well. And we have a common theme here that for quite some time, the dollar has just been weakening and weakening and weakening. Now you can draw this trend line in a few different ways. There is another trend line that starts here and cuts down here and it shows that it broke out over the top of this line but it's come back to retest it, or you can just draw it from here and you can see that it's actually bouncing off this line and trending downwards. So the dollar is not doing great. So that generally means assets are probably going to do well, but it's hard to tell. It's not like you can just look at one, you know, one little uh, map or one little chart, I should say, and then that's gonna give you the clear indications because this indication says uh, the dollar's not doing well, so Bitcoin should be doing well. But let's have a look at the Bitcoin chart. All right, here's the Bitcoin chart. And we've looked at this a number of times. And so we came up and then we had that steep sell-off. And now we've sold up and now we're just starting to range. And again, we've really been ranging from the 10,000 up to about the you know $11,000 sort of range for quite some time. But whenever we get to 11,000, we sell off pretty quickly. So at the moment, we've looked at the global markets. Uh, sorry, we've looked at the overall market cap it's going up but it's not just roaring straight up it you know moves up and down up and down and it's even starting to trade sideways a little bit we've looked at the s p 500 and it's much the same as the uh, overall uh, crypto market sold off 
sold uh, pumped up a little bit, sold off a little bit, and now it's just kind of ranging as well. It's had days where you know it gets up to 360 and then you know drops down to that sort of 350, 345 ish range. What other indicators are that might tell us what's going on with Bitcoin? All right, here we go. We got the gold market. The gold market, guess what the gold market's been doing for a while? Ranging kind of sideways. So really at the moment, there's no clear indicators of what might be happening. But look, it is Sunday afternoon. So really, the thing that I'm going to be looking at the most to give me a clue of what I think uh, Bitcoin might do in the more longer run, because in the short term, who knows, it could do anything. It's just way too hard to know. Again, it's Sunday uh, morning over in the States. We could have our weekend sell-off because we didn't really have too much of a sell-off on Friday or Saturday. Again, it's you know it got up to 11,000 earlier today and then sold off, but it's just ranging sideways here. A lot of things are ranging sideways. So this is really what I'm looking at at the moment. And again, keep that over there. Come on, st stay there. Thank you very much. Oh, anyway, this is what's happening at the moment. Even the market is starting to range sideways. So the thing is, that's probably the key indicator that I'm looking at at the moment. The market cap is continuing continuing to grow slowly but surely. We'll just get back to CoinGecko, get off this. So the market cap is slowly but surely growing. Yes, we had a steep sell-off, but all the markets did. And as we can see, gold has been ranging sideways. It's not at its high, but its uh, lows are getting higher. We can see that. Its lows have been getting higher for a while. Obviously, it got a little bit lower here. But even since then, they are slowly but surely getting higher. The Dixie, the dollar. It is rejecting off uh, these marks and continuing to go down. And again, we still got to wait and see what happens. S&P 500 and it's ranging sideways again as well. So really, the market, there's no clear indicators of what's going to happen in the immediate short term. But in the long term, and even since back here, the S&P 500 is only getting stronger and stronger. Now that's all due to stimulus, but the stimulus is what's also helping the Bitcoin market. So. There's no clear indicators from any of these sort of charts, but the overall market is what I'm looking at. And the overall market is growing. Now we're waiting to see if we're going to eventually decouple. Now that's the thing. Will we decouple from the S&P 500 uh, if there's a market crash? Because everyone thinks that there's going to be a market uh, reach, not a crash because we've already had the crash, but that there will be a big market retracement. Because again, we had the big crash, We've sold and got to new all-time highs. And again, that's all on stimulus. It's not on the general public buying and investing. The general public generally doesn't have any money. So this is all sort of funny money that's done this. But this looks similarly, very eerie, eerily similar to the Bitcoin market. So again, this is all sort of much of a muchness. We're waiting to see what is going to happen. But I did see uh, something I found very interesting about where this market uh, is going to go. So we're going to go to the weekly. Now we can get rid of these. We don't need these for now. Because there is one that I am very interested in. Which I'll get rid of that. Now I'm going to go to indicators. Moving average, exponential. So we can get rid of that. Now we go to settings, inputs, 21, style. Let's go for the color. We're going to make it uh, green. And OK. So I spoke about this a little while ago. The 21. Uh, week exponential moving average has been a key indicator for when we're in a bull run and at the moment you can see definitely weren't in a bull run uh, after the COVID sort of thing the pandemic happened dropped down but we haven't dropped below this for quite some time now 
and, and it hasn't done that for a while. Really, the last time was this little bull run we had back in April 2019. So it just stayed well above, but what we can see is if we go back far enough, here, this is the last bull, this is the last bull run. So we got here and then the 21 week uh, exponential moving average. So that basically started in what? Uh, 12th of October 2015 was not breached. Yes, it wicked below at times, but no candle bodies breached it until we got the peak of the next bull run. Uh, and what date was that? The 22nd of January 2018. And then obviously we had the bear market. We had that uh, next kind of bull run, but it wasn't, you know, it was a bull run, but it wasn't quite the run that took us out of it. And then we breached over it again. And now, again, the 21 week exponential moving average is being used to support. So this is what makes me believe we're in a bull run. Could this just reverse and turn around at any time? Yep, particularly if the stimulus stops and stocks start to drop, I could see this selling off. But I would still be looking for it coming back and finding support on that 21 week moving average. Even if we did have a big sell off in stocks, I'm not sure Bitcoin is gonna go much below sort of 10,000. It could come down and fill that CME gap. That's definitely possible. That wouldn't surprise me. But the 21 week moving average, which at the moment is sitting at $10,000, as soon as Bitcoin gets down there, it gets snapped up. Pretty much everyone's got a buy order in at the moment. So we'd have to wait and see. But at the moment, we use the 21 exponential moving average as a key line of support. I believe we're in a bull run. So in the long term, that is what I'm looking at. And again, we've got away from the daily charts. This is now the weekly charts. And as you can see, it's just been growing and growing. Yes, we had a sell off that happens in all bull markets, but it is still punched up off this line and it's still growing. So on the weekly, these charts are growing. We've got to wait and see what happens at the end of this week, whether it sort of remains here. And then what happens next week? Will this again start to grow? That's what I'm looking for. So how do I try to dictate what is going to happen? Look, in the very short term, you know, that's nearly impossible. That's what day traders do. And I'm not a day trader, I'm an investor. But I look at things like gold. What's gold doing? Well, it's just ranging sideways at the moment. What's uh, the Dixie doing? Well, the Dixie is still continuing to fall and that is bullish for Bitcoin as long as the uh, dollar itself is not doing well. Assets tend to grow. Will this continue to fall off? What is the S&P 500 doing? It's a massive correlation to Bitcoin. So we've had this big pump. It had its sell off. It pumped up and rolled over a little bit. But the good thing is Bitcoin didn't roll over too much. Uh, over here on these last two sort of weeks. It, it did a little bit, but let's go back to the daily charts because we're looking at the daily charts on the S&P 500. So we've actually had, a, uh, you know, uh, it's still ranging really. But the key indicators again is this. This is really what I'm looking for at the moment. The market cap continues to grow. It's on its way up. So that's the things that I'm looking for. I have to take a, an overall look on a number of things. On Bitcoin itself, how it's doing, it is slowly but surely ranging up and up and up, getting close to that $11,000 range. We need to break above it. Could we break to the low side? Sure, we could, but I just think we're probably gonna break to the upside, but we'll have to wait and see. And again, it's based on this. Are we gonna get more stimulus? They're definitely lobbying, lobbying for more stimulus. That will push up the S&P 500, which will push up the US dollar, again, the Dixie, the dollar itself, uh, it just keeps being devalued. So that's bullish for Bitcoin and gold. Gold is ranging sideways, but its lows uh, continue to get higher. If we put in a bit of a trend line sort of from here, we can see that slowly but surely it's getting higher. Yes, it dipped below over here, but it is doing much the same as Bitcoin rallying and starting to push a little bit higher. So I guess tomorrow, next couple of days, we'll find out, do these trend lines uh, get broken or do they bounce off them? And again, the 21 week uh, exponential moving average, which is gone now, but that's what Bitcoin is bouncing off. That's really what I'm sort of looking for. Anyway, they're the kind of things that I'm looking for that give me a broader picture. And again, just zoom out. You know, this is a daily. 
Hopefully this will load and won't take too long. I zoom out and look at the bigger picture. And the bigger picture is we've been moving up since back in 2019. Yes, there's been corrections, but again, we're moving up. And I believe we will continue to move up unless something really drastic happens in the market. Could this roll over a little bit and come back down here? Absolutely it could. But I guess, you know, my guess, you know, and I go by my gut all the time, is we might range sideways for a little bit more and then we're slowly, slowly going to start to push up. Retest that $11,000 mark. So start to use this as support and then start to retest that $12,500 mark. And then we really need to kind of push through that, probably bounce off, you know, the $14,000 mark, come back uh, and retest the $12,500 mark and hopefully use that as support. They're the indicators that I'm looking for that make me uh, decide on you know, whether I should be putting more money in or pulling money out at the moment. And again, there's nothing that makes me think we should pull my, uh, money out at the moment. This is a 21 uh, day moving average at the moment. And even that shows that it's starting to be used as support at the moment. I go off the 21 week uh, exponential moving average. Uh, that's a better indicator, Specific, specifically for when we're in a bull market. It's always been something that uh, the, the charts have bounced off and, and that's what it's doing at the moment. But anyway, I'm not going to take up too much more of your time. It's Sunday afternoon here. I hope things are going well for you. Please uh, hit the like button if you like what I'm doing. Leave a comment down below if you, there's something you'd like me to cover. I am going to start uh, covering some individual coins and things, doing reviews and that. It's going to be called Do You Know? Uh, I'll get onto that uh, possibly tomorrow. I might do my first one today. Yeah, I was more... Yeah, I just didn't have the time to really uh, put in the time and effort today, cleaning house and things like that. So tomorrow I'll have a little bit more time. Uh, I've got a couple of days off work, so I'll, I'll get on to that. Like, comment, subscribe. That'll be great. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're on that gain train, and I'll see you next time.